So quite often I get asked about how to go storm chasing. And I don't normally entertain it too much, primarily because of the fact that it is a risk and it can be dangerous, not just by the lightning, by winds, debris, and just driving on the roads, especially when there's been flash flooding. Storm chasing goes back to 1956, as the first regular storm chaser was David Hodley. He began chasing in North Dakota, following the storms, looking at data from the local weather offices and from the airports. Since then, many people have followed his style to capture the fruits of the weather. The thrill of jumping into your car and racing off to intercept a storm is immense being able to witness and capture mother nature at her best or worse as a spiritual connection with the elements as good as any pastime. Here in UK our storms behave differently depending on the type of year. In early March or April they're generally short lived and rely so much more on the ground heat to keep them alive. At times around this period, you can get quite severe lightning that could endanger your life and property. Starting off quite late in the day, most storms will be finished by early evening. So if you do take it up out as a hobby, just be very careful and just start practicing driving around. Don't break any laws, don't do anything silly and just keep your safety and the safety of others the most primary paramount thing oh the sun's gone in as you possibly can it's so dynamic and it is very rewarding when you get some great content of the storm that you've been chasing later on in the year the storms can start early afternoon and live for longer periods of time collaborating with each other to produce far bigger storms by late june into september these storms can often roll on late into the evening. And storms can continue well into October and most activities will have slowed down by the time the ground heat becomes cooler and wetter for late autumn. Now in a moment, I'm going to show you what's in my storm chasing bag that I get ready every season. But what I would recommend is that you check your car over, get it serviced, Make sure the tyres are at the optimum pressure level. Make sure the water's right, the oil's right. Because it's very important to get your car in good order before you even start thinking about packing your bag. You'll need waterproofs. Trust me, you will need waterproofs. Good water resistant camera, snacks and a drink and lots of patience. A towel will come in handy too. One for you and one for your camera. One thing as well when you are going storm chasing is make sure it's a little obvious if you're going anywhere near private land or somewhere remote that you're not there to cause trouble. Don't try and hide yourself or look suspicious or the cow will move you. Because <laughs> quite often or not, a lot of times people will come out and ask me what I'm doing, especially if I've kind of parked on the verge of private land or stood actually on private land by using their uh, fence here as a way of holding my camera. So it's just something to look out for. Don't be hostile. If they ask you to move, do so. If you're on public land and you have a right to be there, be respectful. You've got to be respectful uh, and cooperate. Tell them what you're doing. Tell everything you're doing. Show them footage just to uh, collaborate your purpose of being in that area. And nine or 10 times they'll be fine. And they'll ask you questions and they'll tell you stories. Like this farm has just climbed over the fence now, seeing last week. He saw rain and wind here, and he's lived here all his life, that he's never seen like before. Typically in the morning, it'll start dry and sunny with small cumulus clouds gathering into large sets, developing and bubbling aloft. These become towering cumuluses and can climb very high. 2,000, 10,000, all up to 50,000 feet. Cubano nimbus clouds 
These are daunting, multi-level clouds, commonly known as thunder clouds, that can produce hail, thunder and lightning. These can generate mostly across the prone areas like Wales, the Midlands, Dorset to Kent and out of large cities like London, Birmingham and Manchester. As these move along in the direction of the weather, they can subside or recycle into larger systems. Thunderstorms will develop fast in most cases and produce spectacular lightning. Our recommendation is to stay at home and observe the storm in the safety of your home. However, if you want to take the risk, you'll need a few tools to help you along. There's a lot to chasing storms. First, you'll need some type of digital aid to learn what type and how severe the storms are in your area. I would really recommend you chase locally to avoid getting lost or spending too much money and time driving around. Wait for the storms to come to you initially, because in your spare time you can study the weather models and learn all about the clouds. To start off, you could visit websites that have weather models. These often display probability of thunderstorms or CAPE. Now, without getting into too much information about what CAPE is, it's quite simple to understand when you look at the charts. The higher the CAPE value, the greater chance that there could be a thunderstorm. Now you mix that with the chance of rain, the weather warnings, and the percentage chance of there being a thunderstorm in your area, it can generally give you a basic idea. Once you've got an idea of whereabouts these thunderstorms are gonna appear, you could always go onto Google Street View by following it via the maps, plonking that little fella down on the road somewhere, and having a scout about remotely at home to find the best viewpoint because you want as much clear space in front of you to capture the best lightning shots for you to share. Do this many times, it gives you a great idea of the best places where you can go from the comfort of your armchair. Then you can have a practice run out in your car, time yourself how long it takes to get there, navigate the roads and the conditions to give you a better understanding of what you will be under when the thunderstorms approach in that area. So using the Met Office app, they have a rain radar section down below, which is something I've used for quite some time now. And you can see the development that's occurring sort of Ormskirk, from Ormskirk, Preston, across the River Ribble, making itself into South Fylde. You can see the little features that are building. Now you can see that evidently now, visually, these will develop. They look small, but they will develop. And these storms, potential storms rather, I should say, will become a little bit more organized and bring themselves together. And in the space of about an hour, they'll form themselves into proper, decent thunderstorms. You'll need lots of experience and patience. You'll also get some great cloud formations with different lightning effects, but at night time, the photography can be best. Choose a nice quiet spot and set your DSLR camera to long exposure, five to 15 seconds. Set your aperture around F8 and your ISO value between four and 800. You're wanting a lightning bolt to pounce across the frame or directly to the earth. And once it does, keep going. Don't set the ISO too high you get a very grainy or noisy image. However, you can always use your smartphone to film a storm. Great quality and great results. And you might be able to take a screenshot and improve it with post editing. Don't forget, set your smartphone to 60 frames per second, a high definition or 4K and good luck. Yeah, so there you go. A little storm chase guide from Storm Chase and Nod Rock. Don't forget to check out the links in the description area down below to help you along with your storm chasing uh, adventures. And please stay safe and respectful 
and enjoy the content that you can grab for yourself and others to share with. And don't forget to share it on the Weather Fans page. Again, link in the description area down below. And until next time, keep those batteries charged. Ta-da.